The Religion of Islam Presented by the Quran and Sunnah Part 4 J. I. S. A., Jesus, peace be upon him. Maryam, Mary, the chaste pure daughter of Imran, was a devoted worshipper who adhered to the commands of Allah that had been revealed to the prophets after Moses. She was a member of the family which Allah Almighty chose above all humankind. In the Quran, Allah says, Allah honored Adam, peace be upon him, by making the angels prostrate before him, Noah, by making him the first messenger to the people of the earth. The family of Abraham, by placing prophethood in his children, and the family of Imran, the father of Mary which is a reference to Jesus, peace be upon him. He selected all of them and preferred them over all the people of their time, Surat al-Imran, 33. The angels gave her glad tidings that Allah had chosen her. Remember, O Messenger, when the angels said to Mary, Peace be upon her Allah has chosen you because of the praiseworthy qualities you have. He has purified you from all defects, and chosen you over all the other women of your time. O Mary, stand for long periods in prayer, prostrate to your Lord and bow down with his righteous servants who bow down to him. Surat al-Imran, 42-43 then, Allah Almighty informs how He created Jesus in her womb without a father. He says, And mention, O Messenger, in the book revealed to you the story of Mary, peace be upon her, when she moved away from her family and stayed separately in a place to their east. Thus, she made for herself a veil from the people which would cover her, so that they cannot see her when she is worshipping her Lord. Then I sent Gabriel, peace be upon him, to her, thus he appeared to her in the form of a perfectly formed human so she thought he has a malicious intention towards her. So when she saw him in the form of a perfectly formed human heading towards her, she said, I seek protection of the merciful from you that any harm should come to me from you, if you are pious and fear Allah. Gabriel, peace be upon him, said, I am not a human. I am only a messenger from your Lord who he has sent to you for me to give you a good pure child. Mary said surprisingly, how can I have a child when neither a husband or anyone else has come near me nor am I an adulteress that I should have a child? Gabriel said to her, The matter is as you said, namely that no husband or anyone else has touched you nor are you an adulteress. However, your Lord said, To create a child without a father is easy for me. And it is so that the child granted to you is a sign for people of the power of Allah, and a mercy for me to them, due to the good they will achieve through him. And the creation of this child of yours is a fixed decree from Allah and written in the preserved tablet. So she conceived him after the angel blew into her, then she withdrew with him to a place far from the people. And the pangs of childbirth struck her and made her take refuge by the trunk of a date tree. Mary said, If only I had died before this day and I was something not even mentioned, so that bad is not thought of me. Then Gabriel called to her from the bottom of the valley, Do not grieve. Your Lord has made for you a spring of water beneath you from which you can drink. And hold the trunk of the tree and shake it, it will instantly drop fresh ripe dates on you. So eat of the ripe dates, drink of the water, and be pleased with your child and do not grieve. And if you see any person who asks you regarding the child, say to him, I have bound myself to silence for my Lord's sake, so will not speak to any person today. Then Mary came carrying her child to her people. Her people said to her out of shock, O oh Mary, you have committed a grave fabricated matter, by bringing a child without a father. O oh one who resembles Aaron, a righteous man, in worship, your father was not an adulterer nor was your mother. You are from a pure household and known to be righteous, so how can you bring a child without a father? She pointed towards her son Jesus, peace be upon him, who was in the cradle. So the people said in surprise, How can we talk to a child who is in the cradle? Jesus, peace be upon him, said, I am the servant of Allah. He gave the gospel and made me one of H. prophets. And he made me a great benefit for the servants wherever I am. And he ordered me to perform prayer and give zakat for as long as I live. And he made me righteous to my mother. And he did not make me arrogant towards the obedience of my Lord or did he make me disobedient to her. And safety from the Satans and his helpers is on me on the day of my birth, the day of my death and the day I shall be raised on the day of judgment. The Satan has no evil effect on me in th three frightening places. He who is described with these qualities is Jesus, son of Mary.
and this discussion is the word of truth regarding him, not that which is said by the misguided who doubt and disagree in his affair. It does not befit Allah to have a son, exalted and free he is from this. When he intends something, it is enough for him to say regarding this thing, b, and it most definitely becomes. So he who is like this is free from having a son. And Allah, may he be glorified, is both my Lord and your Lord, so make worship sincere for him alone. This which I have mentioned to you is the straight path that leads to the pleasure of Allah. Surat Maryam, 16-36 When Jesus, peace be upon him, called people to the worship of Allah, some accepted his call, but many rejected it. He kept calling them to worship Allah and faced disbelief and hostility from a lot of the people, who even tried to kill him. Thereupon, Allah said to him, Allah also planned against them by saying to Jesus, O Jesus, I will take you away alive, raise your body and soul to me, rid you of the filth of those who disbelieved you and distance you from them. I will make those who follow you part of the true religion, which includes acceptance of Muhammad, peace be upon him. And they will have greater proof and might over those who disbelieve you until the day of resurrection. Then to me alone will be your return on the day of resurrection and I will pass true judgment between you regarding your differences. Surat al-Imran, 55 Allah Almighty made one of those pursuing him look like him. So, people seized that person mistaking him for Jesus, peace be upon him, and they killed and crucified him. As for Jesus, son of Mary, Allah raised him to himself. Before his departure, he informed his disciples that Allah would send another messenger called Ahmad to convey and spread the religion. A Quranic verse reads, Remember, O Messenger, when Jesus son of Mary, peace be upon him, said, O Israelites, I am Allah's Messenger. He has sent me to you to confirm the Torah that was revealed before me. I am nothing new among the messengers. I have come to give the good news of a messenger who will come after me, whose name is Ahmad. When Jesus brought the evidence indicating his truthfulness to them, they said, This is clear magic, and we will never follow you. Surat as Saf, 6 after a period of time, the followers of Jesus were divided and there emerged a sect that went to extremes with regard to him, claiming that he is the Son of Allah. Far exalted is Allah above their claim. They were tempted in this claim by the fact that Jesus, peace be upon him, had been born without a father. In this regard, Allah Almighty says. With Allah, the example of the creation of Jesus, peace be upon him, is like the creation of Adam, who was born from dust without a father or mother. Allah simply said to him, Become a man. And he became as Allah willed. How do you then assume that Jesus is a God on the basis that he has no father when you accept that Adam is human despite his having no father or mother? Surat al Imran, 59. Indeed, the creation of Jesus without a father is not more amazing than the creation of Adam with no father or mother. Hence, Allah Almighty addresses the children of Israel in the Quran and commands them to keep away from this disbelief, saying, Say, O Messenger, to the Christians who received the Gospel, do not overstep the limits in your religion and do not say anything but the truth about Allah in relation to Jesus. The Messiah, Jesus, Son of Mary, is only Allah's Messenger sent with the truth. He created him by his word which he sent with Gabriel to Mary, which was the word be, and he became. It was a breath from Allah which Gabriel blew with Allah's instruction. So have faith in Allah and all his messengers without making a distinction between them. Do not say, the gods are three. Avoid saying this false statement and it will be better for you in this world and the afterlife. Allah is the only one God free of any partner or child. He is self-sufficient. The dominion of the heavens, the earth and whatever is in between the two is his. He is sufficient as a guardian to carry out the affairs of his creation. Jesus, son of Mary, will never be proud and reject being a servant of Allah. The close angels who do not go against Allah's instruction and who do as they are instructed will also never disregard being Allah's servants. How, then, do you take Jesus as a god? How do the idolaters take angels as gods? If anyone rejects worshipping Allah and turns away from it, that he will gather all of them before him on the day of rising and will recompense each one with what they deserve. Those who have faith in Allah, 
accept his messenger and do good actions with sincerity in agreement with the sacred law, he will give them the reward of their actions without any reduction. In addition, he will give them more out of his grace and kindness. As for those who scorned Allah's worship and obedience and were arrogant, he will punish them with a painful torment. Besides Allah, they will not find any friend to bring any benefit to them nor any helper to protect them from harm. Surat An Nisa, 171 to 173. Addressing Jesus on the Day of Judgment, Allah Almighty says, Remember that Allah will address Jesus, son of Mary, peace be with him, on the Day of Rising, and ask him whether he told people to worship him and his mother besides Allah. Jesus will reply, declaring Allah's purity, It was not right for me to tell them anything but the truth. If I had said that you would know it, because nothing is hidden from you. You know what I keep hidden within myself, but I do not know what is with you. You are the only one who knows everything that is hidden and everything that is apparent. Remember that Allah will address Jesus son of Mary, peace be with him, on the day of rising and ask him whether he told people to worship him and his mother besides Allah. Jesus will reply, declaring Allah's purity, it was not right for me to tell them anything but the truth. If I had said that you would know it, because nothing is hidden from you. You know what I keep hidden within myself, but I do not know what is with you. You are the only one who knows everything that is hidden and everything that is apparent. Jesus will say to his Lord, I only told people what you instructed me to tell them, to worship you alone. For as long as I remained amongst them I watched over what they were saying. When my term ended and I was raised to the sky alive, you, O Lord, were watching their actions. You are a witness to everything and nothing is hidden from you, so you know what I said to them and what they said after me. If you punish them, O Lord, they are your servants and you can do with them as you wish. If you graciously forgive those of them who had faith, nothing can stop you from doing so because you are the mighty, who cannot be overpowered, and the wise in your handling of matters. Allah will say to Jesus, Peace be with him, that the day of rising is a day on which the truthfulness of those who were true in their intentions, statements and actions will be of benefit to them. They will receive gardens with palaces and trees overlooking flowing streams, in which they will live eternally, with death never coming to them. Allah will be pleased with them and will never become angry with them. They will pleased with Allah because of the everlasting delight they have received. Such reward and pleasure is the supreme success, which cannot be equaled by any other. Surat al-Ma'ida, 116-119 Hence, the Messiah Jesus, the Son of Mary, is innocent of these millions who call themselves Christians and believe they are followers of Jesus Christ. 3. Muhammad, the Messenger of Allah, the Seal of Prophets and Messengers Nearly six centuries passed after Jesus, peace be upon him, had been raised to heaven, during which people swerved from guidance and turned to disbelief and error and worshipped others besides Allah. So, Allah Almighty sent Muhammad, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, in Mecca, Hijaz, with guidance and the true religion, calling people to worship Allah alone, with no partner. He supported him with signs and miracles that proved his prophethood and message. He made him the seal of the messengers and made his religion the final one, preserving it from distortions and alterations till the end of time. So, who is Muhammad? Who are his people? How did Allah send him? What are the signs of his prophethood? What are the details of his life and biography? This is what we will attempt to present and clarify in these few pages. A. His lineage and honor. He is Muhammad ibn Abdullah ibn Abd al Mudalib ibn Hashim ibn Abd Manet ibn Qusay ibn Kilab. His lineage goes back to Ishmael the son of Abraham, peace be upon both of them, from Quraysh, an Arab tribe. He was born in Mecca in 571 AD, his father died while he was still in his mother's womb. So, he grew up as an orphan under the care of his grandfather, Abd al mudalib and later, after his grandfather's death, under the care of his paternal uncle Abu Talib. B. His Traits we have previously noted that a messenger chosen by Allah Almighty should be at the climax of purity, truthfulness, and noble morals. And that was the exact description of Muhammad, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him. He grew up as a truthful and honest man, known for his good morals, kind speech, and eloquence. 
He was loved by everyone, near and far, and was held in high esteem among his people. They called him, the honest one, and would entrust him with their precious possessions whenever they went on a journey. In addition to his good morals, he was also of a good appearance. The eyes would always enjoy looking at him. He had a white face, wide eyes, long eyelashes, black hair, broad shoulders, and moderate height, closer to being tall. One of the companions described him saying, I saw the messenger of Allah, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, in a Yemeni garment, and I had never seen anyone better looking than him. He was unlettered, who could not read or write, and lived among mostly unlettered people. Few of them would read and write. They, however, were smart, quick-witted, and with sharp memory. See, Quraysh and the Arabs. The Prophet's people and clan lived in Mecca beside the Kaaba, which Allah Almighty had commanded Abraham and his son Ishmael, peace be upon them, to build. As many years passed, they deviated from the religion of Abraham's sincere worship of Allah alone and, along with the surrounding tribes, they placed idols of stones, trees, and gold around the Kaaba. They deemed them sacred and believed that they could bring about benefit and cause harm. Moreover, they created certain rituals in worship to these idols, the biggest and the most important and famous of which was the one called Hubal. There were other idols and trees outside Mecca worshipped apart from Allah and held in sanctity, like Al-Lat, al and Manat. The relationship between different tribes was marked by arrogance, pride, aggression, and grinding wars. They, nonetheless, had some good traits like bravery, hospitality, and truthfulness. D. The Start of the Prophet's Mission At the age of forty, and one day when the Prophet, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, was in the cave of Hira, outside Mecca. He received the first revelation from heaven through angel Jibril, Gabriel, who pressed him and said, Read. He said. I cannot read. He again pressed him strongly and repeated the request and received the same reply. He did this for a third time, pressing him more strongly and asking him to read, and the reply was, What should I read? Thereupon, he said. O oh Messenger! Read what Allah reveals to you, starting with the name of your Lord who created the creation. He created the human from a clot of congealed blood, after it had been a drop of semen. O oh Messenger! Read what Allah reveals to you. Your Lord is the most kind, no kind person can come to his kindness, because he has abundant generosity and goodness. The one who taught to write, and the revelation, through the pen. He taught the human that which he did not know. Surat al alaq 1-5 The angel went off and left him. So, the Prophet, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, returned to his house and wife, in fear and panic. He said to his wife Khadija, Cover me, for I fear for myself. She said. No, by Allah, Allah will never humiliate you for you maintain kinship ties, help the poor, and assist those hit by calamities. Then, Gabriel came to him in the form Allah had created him in. Blocking the horizon. He said, O Muhammad, I am Gabriel, and you are the messenger of Allah. Thereafter, the revelation successively came from heaven. Commanding the Messenger of Allah, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, to call his people to worship Allah alone and to warn them of polytheism and disbelief. So, he began to call his people, one by one, starting from the nearest ones, to embrace Islam. The first to believe in him were his wife Khadija bint Kuwailid, his friend Abu Bakr as Siddiq, and his cousin Ali ibn Abi Talib. As his people knew about his call, they began to confront him and plot against him. One morning, he came out and called out loud, O oh morning! A word used at that time for the purpose of gathering people. The people gathered one after another to hear what he had to say. When they gathered, he said to them, What if I informed you that the enemy would attack you in the morning or in the evening would you believe me? They said, We have never seen you lying. He said, Indeed, I am a warner to you, ahead of a severe punishment. Thereupon, his paternal uncle Abu Lahab said to him, May you perish, is it for this that you have gathered us? So, Allah Almighty revealed. Both hands of the uncle of the Prophet, 
peace be upon him Abu Lahab son of Abdul Muttalib have lost because of the loss of his actions, he used to harm the Prophet, peace be upon him. His efforts are in vain. How much can his wealth and his children benefit him? They cannot defend him against the punishment, nor bring any mercy to him. On the day of judgment, he will soon enter the flaring hellfire and suffer its heat. And his wife Am Jamil who would also harm the Prophet, peace be upon him, by throwing thorns into his path, will also enter it. Around her neck will be tightly bound a rope with which she will be dragged into the hellfire. Surat al-Masad, 1-5 The Prophet, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, kept calling them to Islam and asking them, say, there is none worthy of worship except Allah, only then you will succeed. But they said. Has he made gods only one god? This is strange indeed. Allah Almighty revealed verses that called them to guidance and warned them of the error they were in. Some of these verses read. O Messenger! Say to these idolaters, rebuking them, Why do you disbelieve in Allah who created the earth in two days, on Sunday and Monday, and you attribute equals to him whom you worship instead of him? He is the Lord of all creation. He created firm mountains on it, which stabilize it and prevent it from shaking. And he proportioned the provisions of the people and animals by the fourth day, following on from the two previous days, Tuesday and Wednesday, equal for whoever wants to ask regarding it. He created firm mountains on it, which stabilize it and prevent it from shaking. And he proportioned the provisions of the people and animals by the fourth day, following on from the two previous days, Tuesday and Wednesday, equal for whoever wants to ask regarding it. Then Allah, may he be glorified, resolved to create the sky at a time when it was smoke, saying to it and the earth, Submit to my command willingly or be forced, it has to be one of the two. They said, We come willingly, O our Lord. We have no wish except your wish. Then Allah completed the creation of the heavens in two days, Thursday and Friday. With that, the creation of the heavens and the earth was completed in six days. Allah inspired in every heaven whatever He would decree concerning it and whatever obedience and worship He would command. Allah also decorated the nearest heaven with stars, and protected it from the Satan's eavesdropping. All that is the decree of the Almighty who no one can overcome, and who is all aware of His creation. So if these people turn away from bringing faith in what you have brought, then say to them. I have warned you of a punishment that will fall upon you, like the punishment that fell upon the people of Hud, the Ad, and the people of Salah, the the mud, when they rejected their messengers. Surat Fusilat, 9-13 However, these verses and this call only increase them in obstinacy and arrogant rejection of the truth. They even began to inflict harsh torment upon anyone accepting Islam, especially the weak ones who had no means of protection. They would, for example, place a large rock upon the chest of one of them and drag him through the markets during severe heat, ordering him to disbelieve in the religion of Muhammad or remain in this torment. Many of them died from severe torture. As for the Prophet, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, he enjoyed the protection of his paternal uncle Abu Talib, who loved and sympathized with him. He was a respected leader in Quraysh, however, he did not embrace Islam. Quraysh tried to strike a deal with the Messenger of Allah, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him. They offered him money, authority, and other temptations provided that he should give up the call to this new religion, which insulted the idols they sanctified and worshipped apart from Allah. In response, the Prophet, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, displayed a firm and categorical stance, for this was a message that Allah commanded him to convey to people. And were he to disobey the command, Allah would punish him. He told them that he wanted good for them, and they were his people and kith and kin. By Allah, if I were to lie to all people, I would not lie to you, and if were to deceive all people, I would not deceive you. When their attempts to strike a deal to stop his call to Allah bore no fruit, the Quraysh became more hostile towards the Prophet, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, and his followers. They asked Abu Talib to hand Muhammad over to them so that they would kill him, in return for whatever he wanted, or otherwise he should stop proclaiming his religion amongst them. So, his uncle asked him to cease his call to this religion. 
Feeling sad, the Prophet, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, said. Say, there is none worthy of worship except Allah, witnessing that, the notable said. Would you renounce the religion of Abd al Mudalib? Would you renounce of the religion of your forefathers? So, he found it too grave. That he should leave the religion of his forefathers and enter Islam. Hence, he died as a polytheist. The Prophet, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, grieved so much because his uncle died as a polytheist. So, Allah Almighty addressed him saying, O Messenger, you do not guide whomever you love, such as Abu Talib and others, by enabling him to bring faith, but rather Allah alone is the one who enables whomever he wants to be guided. And he knows better regarding whom it has already passed in his knowledge that he will be amongst those guided to the straight path. Surat al-Qasas, 56